You're listening to the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by LineStar, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now, here are your hosts, fantasy football experts, Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome to the pre-snap right here on the Line Star app. It's me, and it's Chris Meany, and it's you. That's right, football is back, and we are here doing our preview shows as we're getting closer and closer to DFS time. Chris Meany, football's upon us. Welcome back, sir. Yes, uh, happy to start doing these shows. As much as I love baseball, it's been a fun time, but I, I'm uh, I'm very excited for the football season. We've got some preseason action already in the books. I am I'm all for the football. You know this, Joe. I'm I am, and what we're going to be doing here is just kind of give you a little overview of all the teams. You know, just kind of our, our takes heading into the season. We all know everything's going to change after week one. We all know oh, we're going to do a lot of things, but the best thing we could do is just kind of run through so today's show we're going to do the east which means afc east nfc east and let's start with my new england patriots the champs i still can't believe that they won another super bowl like as a patriots fan even i'm kind of like man these guys again but you know whatever it's still and the way they did it too right i mean they didn't it's boring worst football game like (laughs) i guess if you love defense it's good and i do but you know it wasn't the most entertaining super bowl let's put it that way no, it wasn't. It was a solid finish. You know, we we got the patented, you know, Brady to Gronk at the end for him to go out like that. Uh, it was pretty. It was a pretty cool moment. I'm not obviously a Pats fan. I'm still able to respect uh, what those two have done over the years and what the Patriots have done. And yeah, here we are again. Just another season of. I'm sure Joe, you've heard it all year. Uh, they're not the same team. They can't get it done. The the weapons are not there. You know, questions of the backfield. What's gonna the Patriots, I wouldn't be shocked again if they just roll through this division one more time. Well, and look, let's start with Tom Brady, who just signed his little extension there. So I think the thing with Brady is this. Whenever there's opportunities, and we all know this with the New England Patriots, this year coming up in DFS, when there's opportunities for them to run the football on teams that have trouble defending the run, I think you're going to fade away from Tom Brady altogether. And I think you are going to load up on James White, especially on the DraftKings side, and Sony Michelle as well, as long as he's healthy. And I just think that you want to pick your spots this year with Brady because what you saw last year was a definitive move towards the run. You saw it even two years ago. They're starting to move in that direction. And that's because the defense is very improved. And on top of that, they have these backs now and a need because there's a lot of targets gone from Rob Gronkowski, and we don't know exactly where they're going to end up. Maybe some will end up uh, with Nikhil Harry. We'll see. Maybe some will end up with Philip Dorsett. I think Dorsett's going to be the sneaky guy early on because of the rapport they those two had last year where, you know, in a flex spot or as a third wide receiver, as a discount, he might be a nice lineup builder early in the season. Yo, absolutely. For sure. I mean, my favorite guy that I think will stay constant all year is James White in this offense. I, I feel like he's headed for another season where, you know, he'd flirt with 90 catches, 87 last year. Obviously we know he doesn't do a lot on the ground, but he's, he's the big part of that offense. I mean, Julian Edelman, sure. But James White is just going to be consistent, I think. When you're looking at Brady, I, you nailed it. You know, they're going to want to run the football. They're going to use all these backs. They're going to want to run the football with Sony Michelle. And it's going to be hard to find any guys. Honestly, my feeling from like a cash game standpoint, it's going to be hard to roll out anybody else other than James White or Julian Edelman. Those are the two. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And it'll be fascinating to see how much of a discount too they get early on because there is no Gronk and because the wide receiver situation is kind of in flux, how that affects Tom Brady's pricing. And if it does make him somebody that's useful in that sense, so I'm sure as the season goes on, we'll get a little bit more clarity there, but right now we don't have any clarity with the tight end position over there. We know Edelman will be Edelman. Uh, and look, White had a, a career year last year. I think that they feel he can repeat something close to that. He caught 87 balls last year, so that's pretty damn good. Um, the, the surprise was how much he actually ran the football. And if that continues, then he's certainly one of these guys, too. When you look at the game log, which was funny, is you get sometimes, the, you know, you kind of get the either or with James White. You get the big run game or the big pass game. Very rarely did you get both on the same day. So it really, as always with the Patriots, it comes down to game plan. And that's the thing. When you're utilizing them, you have to know what their opponent is and what you're going to do with them because that's exactly how they're going to 
uh, to run out in terms of game plan. So uh, when you're looking at the New York Jets, you see a whole new defense. Speaking of defense, too, they got some new uh, fresh faces there, too. C.J. Mosley being one of them, which was a huge addition, I thought. And uh, look, this is now about the evolution of Sam Darnold. Where is he going to go forward? We saw first part of the year, not very good. Way too many turnovers. The second part of the year, towards the end there, he started to limit those interceptions. Uh, things became much, much different for him. So what's your expectation for Darnold now? Do you think that now at Le'Veon Bell there, you can kind of build a more uh, balanced and actually effective approach here with this offense? Yeah, I think so. I mean, having him it obviously helps, you know, I don't know if he's going to get back to catching the ball as much as he did in Pittsburgh, but he's he's going to be an easy completion for, you know, Sam Darnold and a huge, huge, it's it's an understatement, really, the upgrade that they have, you know, bringing in Le'Veon Bell. And also, you know, they bring in Jamison Crowder, who has always been, when he's healthy, he's been productive on the field. I know, you know, just one preseason game but his first one he at least looked pretty good pretty spry a little jump in his step I, I like him and he's got some other guys too and and I think you know maybe not a wide receiver one in fantasy land but certainly somebody we're going to be talking on this show throughout the year is Robbie Anderson I think he's a solid wide receiver too in, in season-long standpoint and you know settings and I think he's somebody that we'll talk about pairing these two up in tournaments because if you'll look at some of the games that Sam Darnold had yeah 15 interceptions I mean that's top five in football you want him to clean that up a little bit we don't care about that as much in fantasy but he's going to be taking some shots down the field because this Jets defense yeah it's improved but it's still not going to be great and they're going to be playing from behind so that means passes catches out of the backfield for Le'Veon Bell and it means you know some deep shots Robbie Anderson just looking at some game logs from Sam Darnold last year I mean and a couple really nice ones when there's you know a shootout one against uh, Houston against the Texans where he, you know, he tops 22 fantasy points. Another, whether it's a shooter against Denver, you know, he tops 18 fantasy points. And those were the games where he's hooking up with Robbie Anderson, those two, three touchdown games. You're going to want that kind of connection. But I think a step forward for Sam Darnold, he's always going to be somebody, I think, Joe, that we talk about in DFS as a value. You're never going to have to really spend up for him. So he's going to be one of those guys. If you punt the quarterback position in a good matchup, I mean, that's something we'll probably be doing. All and it time. seems like for everybody's on one side of the fence or the other with Le'Veon Bell, Chris. Like you either believe that Adam Gase is going to ruin him or you think it's going to be great and he's going to be fine. Yeah, I kind of believe that he's going to be more fine than not. I just think it's an expectation of this is not the Steelers offense. Therefore, you have to automatically just budget back your expectations to about, you know, 10, 15 percent of what you used to get at Le'Veon Bell. And I still think that's pretty good. It'll be fascinating to see early on the usage, the touches, how much of that target share he gets. But are you cautiously optimistic or are you in one of these uh, Adam Gase is crazy and I want nothing to do with Le'Veon Bell? No, I'm I'm optimistic. I, I do think Adam Gase is crazy. Uh, and, you know, OK, he, I guess those are two separate questions. Yeah, That's fair it's, enough, Chris. it is, too. You know, a couple things, honestly, what, you know, right away you go back to the Miami thing and it's like, OK, maybe he just didn't like Kenyon Drake. Maybe he didn't like J.J. Like those two didn't gel. He was he's always saying something negative about those two. I didn't really feel like he said anything positive about them. And then. Just recently, he says, you know, he wouldn't spend that kind of money on Le'Veon Bell. Like, why even bother saying that? You just got him. He's your running back. He is a stud. If he's anything, if you say, okay, 10% you said drop off. So what are we looking at here from Le'Veon Bell? Maybe 70 catches, 60, 65 catches, 1,000 yards. Still pretty good. That, that's still pretty good. <laughs> that's really good. And exactly. probably 600 through the air. So we're looking at the ceiling for Lev Bell is still 17, 1,800 total yards. But a solid floor, there's 1,500. They're going to use, he's going to have to use Le'Veon Bell. Like this isn't a Kenyon Drake, J.J. situation. Yeah, you, you kinda, pay him that you money, you may that, not be happy. You use him. Right. And I think the hope is that Adam Gase is dumb, but not stupid. Right. You know? It's like, come on, you know, you never had a weapon this good. So maybe you know, if exactly. we can give you a pass on some of the guys in the past that we've, you know, had him ruin in fantasy. Uh, speaking of one guy who certainly ruined a lot of other teams last year towards the end of the year, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, because uh, this team right here, Josh Allen last year at the end, man, what a run he had, literally. I um, mean, the guy was averaging 90 yards rushing. I don't think they're going to let him do that over the entire expanse of a season. But Josh Allen, in terms of fantasy quarterbacks and DFS, is going to be a tremendous value early out of the gate. I just I don't believe the narrative that they're going to scale him back too much because that's just not who he is. And the fact that there's no clarity still in the running game. You've got a bunch of guys there. You got LaShawn McCoy, you got Frank Gore. I do believe Devin Singletary, by the time we hit midseason, is going to take over that job in some capacity, whether it be a 
60 yes. 40 timeshare or maybe even 75 25 i think singletary everything's been very positive with him out of camp he's got a lot of potential there and i think this is an organization that's looking to move forward with the youth and uh, one of those additions they brought in as well besides singletary through the draft was john brown who i think this year has some real opportunity as long as he's healthy to be a tournament kind of wide receiver because we all know that this guy can go deep we all know this guy is capable of some big games he is not for the faint of heart. There'll be some zeros on that game log, but there's also going to be some big outputs as well. Right, Chris? Oh, absolutely. He's that boomer bust and he's, he's the poster boy for it. Him and Deshaun Jackson, they really are. And I like Josh Allen. I think he's a borderline QB one in fantasy. He's somebody that I think you can play in cash. You and I were talking about him towards the end of the last season as a cash game quarterback because of the price, because of the fact that he's going to probably get 40 yards on the ground. That is like starting with a touchdown. So Allen finished second among quarterbacks in rushing yards last year. Eight rushing touchdowns that led quarterbacks. Let's remember Incredible he only run, played man. twelve he did, he games. Was, he only played twelve. I was going to say he wasn't even right? a full season. He did all this with Ugh. just playing twelve games, breaking Michael Rick, Vick's record, rushing record in his first eight starts. I mean, he was first on his own team in red zone rushing attempts. That's likely not going to happen because there's a lot of running backs there. You mentioned. I agree with you. I think Singletary is going to eventually take over. Um, yeah, maybe Lashawn McCoy is. We're probably talking about him maybe being, you know, cut from the team halfway through or really scaled back. They also got Frank Gore. They also uh, picked up TJ Yeldon. So there's a lot going on there, but nothing is going to change from Allen's standpoint. He does like to call his own number. He led the league in a dot average depth of targets. Exactly what we want. And that's exactly what Brown is. Last year it was Foster who had that huge a dot. And I was in on Robert Foster. This was a connection that we liked, but with the John, John Brown edition, uh, I think Foster has to take a bit of a step back. With so that right there, a Foster or a, a Brown and an Allen combo, that's what I'm going to like, Joe. I'm oh, going to get the, I'm going to get some gonna, points in the ground and be that, some GPP yeah, and there could be some right. GPP, yeah, some love. And Cole Beasley could be somebody that we were talking. You know, about I'm glad you mentioned well. it because that's where I was going next. Because Beasley, I think, is another one of these sneaky guys that you know could certainly come down with some of these like seven catch games for you know 75 yards and a touchdown Absolutely. very quietly. And I think. He's exactly what Josh Allen needs, which is that slot security blanket kind of guy, because I don't think he has that out of the running backs. It doesn't seem like they're high on TJ Yeldon to kind of be that, no. you know, guy that kind of slips out of the backfield and is kind of the fail safe. So I think Cole Beasley is going to be that. And for young quarterbacks, we've seen, I mean, just look back with young Dak Prescott, how much Cole Beasley was involved. Now, uh, the Miami Dolphins, uh, this is a team that's... Um, Oh, Chris, the one piece that I really enjoyed going into this year, I was doubling down on Kenyon Drake and they're ruining it. They're ruining it because now K1 Balazs and him, it looks like they're set to split carries to start the year. I'm always of the mind talent's going to win out. But unfortunately, when you're talking about splitting carries, it's something that kind of kills the DFS value. And then you go to the wide receivers. I'm done with Devontae Parker. I don't want to hear it anymore. Kenny Stills has won me a lot of money in the past. I had him. I am in that monster game he had against the Jets not that long ago in a couple other spots. And it's about picking your spots and if Ryan Fitzpatrick is starting early on I do think Kenny Stills has again some tournament love but outside of that man I got no love for the Dolphins do you have anything that you're excited about DFS wise for Miami this year no I'm besides with you. playing against them yeah <laughs> you're spotting up for that honestly defense instinct? honestly besides yeah besides playing against them I I feel like we'll be talking about you know, teams, especially at home with huge, huge spreads against Miami running backs. We're going to be talking about teams just really running the football against them in the second half and just kind of wearing out the clock and winning games that way. So there's nothing really to like. I'm with you. I'm out on Parker, too. It's just it's a complete guessing game. You, you might as well just, you know, light your money on fire, to be honest with you. Kenny Stills, I also agree with you there. I have a little bit of love for Albert Wilson. Perhaps uh, I want to see his price in the first few weeks. I feel like we're grabbing at straws now, meaning we are. No, like that's what we're doing. Also, what we need, what the same way that we're talking about Cole Beasley and easy completions is, I think we can talk about Albert w Wilson playing into the slot a little right. bit. They used him a lot. They're going to be throwing the ball, trying to play. <laughs> well, they're catch going up, to be behind. Honestly. They are going to be, be behind. <laughs> Fitzpatrick is better for this offense. I don't know if they're going to go that way. They need to see what they have in Rosen. They acquired him. They're probably going to be drafting a quarterback early next season, maybe first, second overall. So they're going to have to see what they have with Rosen. I personally don't think Rosen's that good. So when he's starting, I probably shy away from this team altogether. And you're right about the running backs as well. You're never going to have a feel for them. There's well, unless no there's an injury or somebody there. finally takes over. The minute yeah. Kenyon Drake is named the starter or has that transcendent game, yeah. Then yes. Then or the other way around. It really could be Belage too. I don't know. It's, I just don't see it. It's weak all around. 
It's, <laughs> it's, it's not what it is. Speaking of yeah. weak, let's yeah. talk about the New York Giants offseason. <laughs> right. nice, 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 so let's yeah. switch from the AFC East to the NFC East here. You like that transition? That's yeah. why I get the big bucks, Meanie. That is oh, gold. Speaking of transitions, gold, here's Jerry. another one. <laughs> it's gold, Jerry. It's gold. Speaking of transitions, the Giants might be making a transition this year at quarterback. So uh, Daniel Jones was drafted this year, much to the chagrin of many, many Giants fans. And uh, so far, preseason's actually been decent. You know, there was that that one thing out of camp where the one had that one clip of him throwing the ball to nobody. Out of <laughs> and it's like, well, maybe the guy ran the wrong route. Like, why are we yes. blaming that it's Daniel yes. Jones's fault? And of course, everybody wanted to jump on that. But I guess here's the question. We'll get to Saquon in a minute because yeah. we all know how great he is. We can throw out all the adjectives about how fantastic and he is. He deserves yeah. them all. Yeah, yeah. But first, let's talk about this transition and how this might potentially affect this team. They're starting in the hole already with wide receiver with the Sterling Shepard injury and the suspension to Golden Tate. These are not good things to start on. No. So the narrative right now is Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram. Mm -hmm. But is it? Should it be? Are, are we just kind of doing that whole addition by subtraction thing, which is kind of lazy fantasy analyst? And I don't like that because isn't it going to be really hard for Evan Ingram to be the only guy and still effective left in that passing game? Yeah, it's... Yeah, I agree with you there again. It's I do like Ingram, but yeah, we can only expect so much. I mean, this guy isn't just going to come in and get, you know, 200 targets. Like, well, I'm just was... saying, like, who else is playing right now? Because Corey Coleman's out for the year, too. There's no I mean, one. They got, they got Cody Latimer on this roster. They got Benny Fowler and Darius Slayton still and all these guys. And I'm looking at him like, oh, well, well, I'm just going to try to stop Saquon Barkley, which is brings me to the next point, which is. As, and he is. He is all world, man. I love Saquon. I was a big fan of him at college. I thought he was going to be transcendent. He was a first round selection, top five selection in last year's Black Book. And now people are like, wow, you pulled Barkley so high. I'm like, yeah, did you watch him play in college? Yeah. yeah. So that returned investment last time I checked. Uh, <laughs> but are you concerned with Barkley's ability now, too, because of the way they're starting out with the agent quarterback, with the wide receivers that aren't existent is this going to hurt saquon barkley's value or you don't care you just want the touches yeah you're I, gonna have to pay for him you're gonna have to pay up through the nose for saquon he's still gonna be expensive yeah he is i, I don't know honestly if i'll ever roll him out in cash is, is saying that he could still lead the league in touches just knowing that 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 price and what the ceiling really is like sure barkley is a stud again yeah this is not what you're saying like he is an absolute stud Studs but, and then paying the premium for a stud with an offense that might have trouble scoring points. This is a could, problem. It's not it that you could, can't exactly. break that one run, but he needs to in order to return that value. Yes. And that's something you have to consider. Oh, he's only going to ever be a tournament play for me because he is going right. to have to break you're that run. Right. You're, you're not going to be able to you know, trust him in cash with a team that could be bottom five offensively. And they're eventually going to turn the page over to Daniel Jones. And this kid can't win no matter what, because I watched that game and he looked pretty good. I was very impressed. Yeah. It was his first preseason game, but again, everybody has been on him. Yeah. He, he made that throw, but he made other throws where I felt like he threw to where he thought his wide outs were going to be like his anticipation was really solid in that game. There's a lot to take away and a lot to like, but we're dealing with a, you know, a weak team here. The line is a little bit better, but you mentioned Sterling Shepard, not 100% of the gate. Golden Tate, done four games. And Ingram has been solid. I look back two years ago when he was a rookie and Odell Beckham Jr. was hurt. Evan Ingram was a for sure thing in fantasy and DFS. Like He was getting those targets. He was one of the few tight ends that you could really rely on. And now we've seen Very the growth. Very too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've seen the growth of other guys. And now I think we're going to see him not be you know cheap like that. He's, he's going to cost... A pretty penny for Ingram, and do you want do you want that with an inconsistent old quarterback in Eli Manning, or you know inconsistent young rookie quarterback in Daniel Jones? So I'll probably be off this team altogether. The same thing does apply with uh, what I was saying with Miami. They're going to be playing from behind often. You look at the schedule to start. I mean Dallas, Buffalo, uh, those are some games maybe honestly that they can hang in. But like a, a team like Tampa, New England, Minnesota, they get into those shootout games where they're going to have to try to throw the ball and score some points. It helps to have a guy like Barkley rack up 12, 10 targets, but how many, how many really, you know, touches or carries is this guy going to get? It, I don't know if they're going to be able to just hand it off to him every single time. I mean, defenses are going to be all over that this year. Yeah. He's going to become Walter Payton real fast. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. And uh, in, in the best way and in the worst way too, because Walter did not have the best deep no. uh, offenses around him. And uh, yet he was still brilliant. So he's going to have to work uphill. That's for sure. All right, let's go over to who I think is going to be the favorite in this division. It's the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I'm looking for Carson Wentz another year removed from that knee surgery. I think he rushed it last year back because he wanted to get back on the field. 
you know, and, and I think it kind of hurt him going forward that year. They've also brought in Miles Sanders uh, and Jordan Howard. So the running game is completely different. So Wentz, I feel very good about. They gave him another deep threat now, like you mentioned before, with Deshaun Jackson in there now. So now it's a matter of what do we think about the running game? I feel good about Wentz. I feel great about Ertz. We all know Ertz's role in this offense is going to be money. If you want to pay up for a tight end, there's not many to pay up for. He's definitely one of them in terms of full PPR, especially. Uh, but really, it's Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard. Howard obviously lacks a ton of upside. And it's Miles Sanders right now is getting the narrative. But I worry about how many times he touches the football. That's my concern. Now, early pricing, there might be some discounts to be had. But I feel like one good game and then all of a sudden that discount's gone. And so will be all of my love for any Miles Sanders shares. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough, honestly, to figure out this backfield because in three years with Doug Peterson, he's only given two running backs 20 carries in a game. One was Ryan Matthews his first year. I mean, that happened twice. Oh, Ryan Matthews, that takes me back. Yeah, right, doesn't it? <laughs> and then the other one was Josh Adams last season. So this is, I mean, Deuce Staley has already said it. This is going to be a running back by committee. And if you follow Doug Peterson, he's he's done this in this three years. He's used all these guys. I mean, even when Frank Reich was calling the shots, he was using all these running backs. So that's with, like, the year they won the Super Bowl, with Blunt and Ajayi and Corey Clement, none of those guys like had the full timeshare. It was split between three of them. You got Clement still hanging around, Smallwood still hanging around. They brought back Darren Sproles for one more year. Hanging around, yeah, who's that, gonna? Yeah, so it's gonna be uh, tough to figure out honestly which which running back to roll out there. It really will. I think you know Sanders has that upside, but if you're looking at DK Week One pricing already, like Howard's four two, Sanders is three nine. I feel like most people go to Sanders, and I get that. But I think out of the gate, it's probably going to be Jordan Howard who's has the the most. It wouldn't touches. shock me. I think it's a I think it's a Wentz and Ertz, uh, yeah, pairing and cash early on, and that's the best that's you can it. hope out of the Eagles. Yeah, you because you want to take a shot on Alshon absolutely. Jeffrey and him, that's fine too. Yeah, but you really got this. Is one of those teams that you have to watch the matchups carefully because you can exploit yes. Deshaun Jackson in a matchup against weak secondaries. That's yeah. something to make him a GPP kind of play. That's yep. in there. But we'll talk about that as we get into the season. Let's move on to the Washington Redskins. Ugh, oh yeah gross all right but let's let's try to find brutal a teams here. today yeah, it's a, well it's the, <laughs> it's the patriots and uh yeah. it's the patriots team. well you know we haven't got to the cowboys we'll, we'll touch on them in a moment but yeah look i want them to transition to Dwayne haskins as soon as possible i think the redskins do and haskins does the fan base does but it's going to be a lot of growing pains that being said you do have running backs here adrian peterson coming off uh a thousand yard season that hardly anybody saw coming. I had all the season long shares I could when he signed there because all I kept thinking of was, well, he's free. Like, yeah. what if he's good? And he was yeah. good enough sometimes. He wasn't great, but Darius Guys has a chance to be great. I feel like this is another situation slow out of the gate, kind of like I talked about Buffalo before, where Geis is going to get worked in. And then at some point in time over the first six weeks of the season, I think that that timeshare is going to turn 60 40 into his favor. And when that does, that's when I'll get excited about guys. But so far, when you talk about the lack of ability to move the football, to move the chains, this whole Washington Redskins offense, even the Trey Quinns of the world, I just have to fade them all together. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot to like about this team at all. And I, I feel the same way you do with Geis and AP. And it's very similar to, you know, Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. I mean, they bring in Howard again, like is his last year's rookie deal. They're going to work him. He's going to get a lot of work early and then they'll probably turn the page. It's probably the same thing that's going to happen here in Washington. We still haven't seen Geis, you know, get on the field yet for preseason action. And, you know, reports out of Washington is he won't play that much in preseason. So we really don't have anything to see from Darius Geis. And we know the offensive line is not good. It hasn't been good for years. They've been rabid with injuries over the past couple of years. Even a couple of years ago, I think they used like 22, 23 different combinations on their offensive line. And, you know, it's, they're not off to a really good start here, uh, you know, this season either. Looking at their week one pricing, you know, a matchup against the Eagles, who you feel like Philadelphia will be able to score, like they're going to be throwing the football. But it's the same thing applies. We're dealing with perhaps like an inexperienced quarterback and, Another team with, you know, lack of weapons. You know, the, the the most expensive guy in the team right now, week one, looking at DraftKings is Paul Richardson. I mean, he's three nine, Docs and three nine. Like these are guys that you just and can't roll in confidence. But and even, you maybe even you can take a shot in tournaments. Don't want them. Uh, yeah, no, maybe I, like just maybe I, one, like here and there. That's all we're ever gonna talk about. That's I it. That's we're never gonna play any of these guys in cash. Ever. No. I think so. in even tournaments it's a waste of money. I just I yeah. think it's going to be a tough year for them. Uh, Guys might start oh, to brutal. change that. Maybe second half of Haskins things start. I like Haskins personally. I yeah, know a I lot of people too. are kind of mixed on him. I'm not. Um, a lot of people are mixed on Deshaun Watson. I was very high on him too. 
So, you know, I thought he was going to be really good. I don't know if Haskins is quite that good, but I, I think that he uh, he can be a, a at least a serviceable quarterback in the NFL. It's certainly improvement on anything they've had recently. I would All take right, the over here. on 10 games from them from him this year. I think he uh, would start over 10 games. Uh, I, I think, think they'll turn the page pretty quickly. I think so, too. I think maybe they have him hold the clipboard for September and then yeah. October. It's like, yeah. all right, trick or treat. Yeah, once we're they're in. like, oh, yeah. and four or five. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now the million dollar question or the lots of million dollar question. When will Ezekiel Elliott or will he come back and play? I think he will. I mean, I read a fascinating piece the other day on ESPN of all places <laughs> by Graziano and um, he was basically saying that, look, if Ezekiel Elliott sits out this whole season, he's really putting himself in a bad spot financially because then the contract rolls over to the next year. So instead of making nine million or something like that, he'll only make three. So really, he he needs to get in there. They need him desperately. OK, desperately. if Ezekiel Elliott is not there, this Dallas offense is not good. You go back and look at the numbers and the splits. Dak Prescott threw eight touchdowns and nine picks when Zeke was not there. You look at the yards per game, the way down, the points were getting down. Everything was down. The losses were piling up. So it's not a coincidence, okay? Dak Prescott has limitations. And Ezekiel Elliott makes a lot of them better because he is such a monstrous presence on the field. So when he's on the field, we all know what he is. He's a cash game play, a tournament play. He's all over the kind of place play. Question is, will he play? I say yes. I think he'll be there week one. We'll see what happens. What do you think? I, I think yes, too. I think he'll be there. I, Dallas is not a Super Bowl contender without Zeke. Not at 100%, all. 100% no. Um, not at all. And Zeke's numbers actually improved when they got Amari Cooper. I look at it this way. In 1992, Cowboys fans will feel me on this one. They won the Super Bowl. And Emmett Smith led the league in, in rushing yards. He held out the following year. He was getting paid, I think, less than half a million bucks. And he, and mm-hmm. he sat out the first two games of the season. Dallas lost those two games. Jerry Jones <laughs> turned around and made him oh, the yeah. highest and, paid running back in NFL history. And, and I don't want to hear about happen. Yeah. I don't want to hear about Tony Pollard. I don't want to hear about Alfred Morris. <laughs> Nobody wants wanna... to hear about those guys. Yeah, it's a joke. I, no, no. But everybody wants to talk to all these people and the people who don't want to get are talking. Oh, just shut up with the Tony yeah. Pollard, okay? Yeah, I get it's it. We can talk Tony thing. Pollard. We can talk Alfred Morris. I mean, he's familiar with the system. We get that. You just can't plug anybody no. in. This offensive line is not, not as good Elliot. as what it was before. No, it's and... not. You're right. And, and Dallas needs Zeke. That's what I mean. Like, Jerry Jones is not getting any younger. He realized this is an opportunity. They drafted Zeke very early. They traded a first-round pick for Amari Cooper. They Like, he needs to pay Cooper, Dak. These guys all need to get paid, but he understands the window to win is, like, right now an opportunity for him. So if you look at just Zeke and Amari Cooper, Zeke in eight regular season games with Cooper, 59 targets, 52 receptions. It's 7.3 targets, 6.5 receptions per game. And without Amari Cooper – Five targets and 3.5 set receptions. So having Cooper on the field, is this what they wanted? It gave them a better balance, better offense. They weren't stacking the box, right? We're talking about Giants and teams stacking the box against Barkley. That's not the case here. When you got a guy like Amari Cooper, Zeke's numbers actually improved and a Cooper, little bit. So. And Cooper will continue to be a tournament play only. I'm sorry. Only. I don't, want, I don't want to hear the cash thing. He's There's so much bottom with him yeah. that I feel like nobody ever talks about anymore. And you know, and it was the same. Like Amari Cooper last year with the Cowboys was the exact same Amari Cooper we've seen pretty much with the Raiders, which is huge yes. outputs and then crickets. Okay. So don't be putting the cash line. The only guy that's cash is Zeke is cash. Like when Zeke he's in the cash. lineup, he's, he's straight the, cash he's all over the place. Absolutely. He's the safest probably player in football, to be honest with you, when he's healthy and he's in the lineup. And Dax is somebody I'm sure we'll talk about. Another guy who likes to call his own number and, you know, run around a little bit, but I won't play him in cash either. It, it The times that I want to play Cooper in tournaments, I'll pair him up with Dak, but that, that'll be it. Like Zeke is the cash game guy. He's the post boy. All right. So that's our AFC and NFC East. We're quick previewing those uh, those eight teams here. Get you kind of up to speed on our thoughts heading into the year. Of course, it's all about evolution and, and rolling on and injuries are going to change things. We know, we know. But this is just to get everybody hyped up because it's preseason. It's the pre-snap and we're ready to go. We're excited. And make sure for your uh, all your preparation, you get your fantasy football black book, 2019 edition, number one in fantasy sports for seven yes. weeks now on Amazon. Go out and get it. You'll be grateful you did. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at line star at Chris Meany at Joe Pisa Pia 17. And I want to remind everybody subscribe to the pre-snap. Uh, the shows are going to be coming out here in the next couple of weeks for the previews. And then we're going to jump in. We're going to have a couple shows a week here, recapping, previewing, getting you ready for all things DFS 
And uh, of course, on the pre-snap, we end a little differently because when we're all done here, there's nothing left for us to do except to set down win. You've been listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by LineStar. Hit subscribe, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Chris Beanie.